so here we are at the abandoned creek. An abandoned creek, you say? How could a creek get abandoned? Well, that's what makes this story so interesting. This little piece of forest is known to locals as no man's land, sometimes called the Lost Subdivision, sometimes called Forest Lane, sometimes called Duncan, but it's also remembered as Buck Road. Something that a good historian learns is not to accept everything at face value. Uh, for example, this appears to be a stream bed, and I know from the old maps that there has been a stream bed over here. Uh, the question is, is this the stream bed? Is it the original stream bed? Um, part of this uh, creek has been diverted in the past. It's definitely diverted now. It's diverted uphill from where we are. I'm walking downhill here. I'm heading in a uh, mostly southerly direction. Um, they did a lot of work over here. Tri-State Tollway, Eisenhower Extension, the 88 ramp, uh, Roosevelt Road, Butterfield Road, and then all of the ramps that interconnect all of these roads. Now, it's possible that 150 years ago, the original settlers, what they did was they widened, channeled, or ditched the creek. This might not even be the original stream bed. This could be very well. Uh, this is a 1938 aerial photo of Elmhurst, Illinois, part of the series. It's actually a copy of a copy and I'm going to be focusing on this area in southeast Elmhurst, the uh, Yorkfield neighborhood and little bits of Berkeley and Hillside. So with a few annotations we can look at a close-up portion of that 1938 aerial photo from the southeast corner of Elmhurst and let's start at the high point using my analog pointer 706 feet above sea level, this is Hillcrest and Butterfield in a neighborhood in 1938 that's yet to be built. They have sidewalks and stuff in. That was a deal in those days. They'd put in the sidewalks, maybe some trees, and then they'd sell lots to all the suckers that came out from the city. Um, the creek I'm interested in, I'm calling Buck Creek because of Buck Road down here. This is the old Buck Road that came off of Harrison. This is old Hillside Avenue. The Illinois Central Railroad tracks. Butterfield Road. This is York Street. But once you get the Butterfield Road, York Street on this photo is Old York Road. Not to be confused with the piece of street that was built about 1960 that went almost through the deepest part of the swamp down here. Roosevelt Road and Roosevelt Road from the county line all the way out to Route 83 is nothing more than a giant swamp, the lowest ground in the area. Um, I've marked in the little creeks on this map. Uh, way at the top we have something called Butterfield Park Creek. That seems to have started up at an old farmer's well and followed the natural swale down to here. Uh, I believe the topo maps pick it up about here as a seasonal stream and show it going this way. Yorkfield Creek starts up just north of Van Buren, comes down through the center of the block off of Chatham, and it came through, and this is where it gets interesting. According to one set of maps, it went off this way. According to another set of maps, it went this way. This is the shortest distance down into the big swamp, the lowland. I go with this. This is kind of uh, following the, uh, the topography of the hill. The hill came down this way fairly steep. 
I think there were times when water could have moved this way. All right, so down in here, Old York Road, where it crosses Roosevelt, there were trailer courts, in my memory, in the 60s and 70s, north and south over here. This little bit of street and this little angle here, this is the big swamp. It's really hard to pick out, but they had to put Roosevelt through at a jog. And they also did the same thing, I believe, here, that this was a get-around. And then, if we pan to the right here, widen out a little bit, Buck Road. This road no longer exists. Uh, the right-of-way is there, you'll get to see it. But it got replaced by Harrison. This is the same photo we've been looking at but the big red lines up there that's the uh, expressways I didn't do all the ramps and everything in there there's quite a bit of spaghetti in there um, but the little creek I was exploring was this little drainage area in here and no man's land is this zone right in here Roosevelt Road cuts it off at the bottom 88 comes in up off of this way, 294 the tri-state this way, and it kind of pinches it off. And then the only way in and out is down here. Little piece of street still survives. This piece is gone. Um, it's been completely changed around in there. So down here at the bottom of the uh, ramp, at the bottom of the embankment, you can see it's much wetter. See all the algae. A lot of deer tracks in here. That always blows my mind that there are deer back here. And you can kind of see that the creek has now diverted. And where does it go? This little section here I have my doubts about as to whether or not this is a legitimate part of the original creek. I think the topography here is correct, uh, but I'm not so sure the creek ran through there. See, this goes back to Forest Lane, Duncan. I think this was just the original ditch here. And then over here, I think this is a ditch too. But over there, that's like a significant stream bed. It's like a horseshoe, and it goes around, and then back around that way. So there used to be a lot of houses back there, or a lot more than there are now. And when they tore them down, they just kind of knocked them down. And there's all sorts of debris around here. I think somebody pushed it this way to uh, stabilize the creek bed. In a little while to figure this out. But I'm at the bottom of the horseshoe, the little bit of creek leg that went to the east and then to the south. This is the far southern end. And this, this pipe, uh, it goes down like 20 feet all together. And the pipe at the bottom is a uh, seven foot tall stormwater pipe, concrete stormwater pipe. I'm not sure what the original topography was like over here. I'm going to guess that this is some sort of uh, manufactured swale. Uh, despite the age of some of these trees here. So what they were doing is they were diverting water down here to a low point. It's being collected in this catch basin. So you see how high it is above the ground? So the water would have to be like knee high in order to flow into that thing. And then over here is part of the system. I'm not going to look down this thing. I'll open it up. But it says main drain.
Well, I'm trying to find the spot where the uh, creek crossed Forest Lane or Duncan or whatever they called this. So post-1955, they had to redo the diagonal road and it ended up being like a squiggly with several jogs in it. Okay, where that uh, stream was piped under the expressway is almost exactly that direction. And what's interesting is if we come down into here, off the road, we find the old stream bed. Or at least what I believe is the old stream bed. Now this could have been almost anything. This could have been water coming to the old creek. This could have been water in the old creek. This could be a modern tollway ditch drain, something or another. Ah, uh, the trees are 50 years old. Uh, since the tollway was built about 65, 70 years ago, uh, these trees might not reflect the true history of the area. What we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of sneak over here. Yeah, there's expressways all around here. That's the ramp from I-88 to uh, 294 and 290. This is where I just popped out at the ditch. And as you can see, it's just a maze of highways and stuff back in here. So up in there by the light, that's where it goes under the road. And it comes back this way. And you can see it's just kind of a sad little ditch here that overflows quite a bit. This is damp back in here. And it heads back on over to the road over there. So this is kind of neat over here. Uh, the same little creek, it trickles down through this little bit of a valley. And then it comes up back on the road. I think this is Fillmore. And here we got one of these giant pipes here. And then we have another one of these big uh, storm sewer things. So from here, and there's what's left of another pipe there, goes across the road. Okay, one branch of that little creek came out almost down there. And this is the entrance to no man's land. I'm outside no man's land. This is Roosevelt Road, Illinois 38. The bridge immediately in front of me is the I-88 ramp. Further back that way is 294. This is also the beginning of one of the area's largest swamps and peat bogs. Roosevelt Road is the low point for this area. From here, past York Road all the way up to 83, then slightly up 83. And just the other side of York Road, that was one of the deepest places in this old swamp system. So according to the topographical maps, Butterfield and Hillcrest is at 706 feet above sea level and it's the highest ground in this part of town. And it's part of the ridge that stretches from the big old hillside hill way over there from the southeast to the northwest this ridge kind of goes across town but i'm only interested in this hill right here at butterfield road and up there at the bus stop that's looking down towards york street and that's harrison all the way at the bottom of hillcrest Well, Butterfield Park is a good place to talk about topography and also how man has come around and has changed things considerably. You can see there's a goodly hill here. What's interesting is the hill used to be much bigger. Right here where the ball field was is. Um, second base used to be higher than the parking lot over there. 
when the tollway came through, uh, they purchased dirt from all these areas. The farmers, the park districts, uh, developers. I'm fairly certain that a lot of the McDougal area got scraped. And down here, do you see this like little ridge below the trail here? From that point down, this was all scraped. And here's what gets really interesting about this little corner of town. According to the old topographical maps, if you were up there on Linden and it rained, any of the water that uh, was west of Linden would go into the Salt Creek watershed. But any rain that came down here in the park or east of here would have gone into the Addison Creek watershed. That's no longer true because everything's been uh, piped away. Everything basically goes north down to a big connector pipe at Madison and then it uh, goes down to Salt Creek. So almost all of this neighborhood now goes to Salt Creek, not Addison Creek. Okay, I'm lined up with the 900 block of cedar. This is where the old farm road used to come back in the old Atwood farm days. But right in this general spot here, I believe there was an old pump, a wind-driven pump, and this also represents the high spot of a little creek, a seasonal creek. Went down here, about four more doors down, it cut that way. Right, so the little creek that came out of Butterfield Park, it went through some of the houses here, and then it basically pops out right here at Hillcrest again, Hillcrest and Adams. And Adams is really interesting because it follows this like curvy line. And if you look at the old aerial photos, you'll notice that this curvy line matches the drainage for this area. All right, so what's happening now is we're heading up to the county line. at the county line the drainage makes this hard turn and we're next to the old Illinois Central Railroad tracks now known as the Canadian National the Freeport sub and right along here they got it all bottled up cattails and all sorts of stuff on the other side it's real wet and everything uh, where the water goes from here, I don't know. It might go to the Metropolitan Sanitary District right away. It could go to Hillside Public Works, Berkeley Public Works, but it essentially leaves DuPage County down here by the tracks. I'm at the corner of Van Buren and Chatham. This is one of the higher spots in town. This is actually kind of the peak of a ridge over here. And if you look over here, do you see that little white fence? And you see all that arborvitae? Well, this is the headwaters of Yorkfield Creek up here at the top of the hill. Uh, Hillcrest is just over the top of the hill. Now I'm down at uh, Chatham and Butterfield. And Yorkfield Creek used to come across the road right over here. And then it flowed across Butterfield down this way. The stop sign is Van Buren, so you can see kind of the uh, hill, Butterfield Road, the highway. Creek crossed right in this area here. And then this is where it gets interesting. Depending on which map you look at, which topographical map, the creek either flowed kind of this way across the bottom of the hill along with the contours or it went at an angle over this way. The Harrison Street flood trench. I just wanted to point this out because this is kind of the bottom of the hill until you get the Roosevelt um, and so this is where all the water collects for the city of Elmhurst on this side of the hill. Right about here at Harvard and York is where Yorkfield Creek, the West Branch, went across the road 
and then down towards Roosevelt. So there's the hospital over there. Before they put up the big hospital, they had the Center for Health, and they had a story there that may or may not be related to the topography of the creek. Uh, they had the building up, they had the building running, and then they discovered they did improper soil testing. This is the story I've been told. I don't know how true it is. But what I was told is they had to completely rebuild the basement wall, the foundation, or 80% of it. They would cut out like six foot uh, wide slabs and then re-pour the concrete. Uh, my guess is this is all a peat bog, a boggy area and the mush, the muck, goes way deeper around here than anybody can imagine. Driving down Lexington, um, I'll show you where that big Harrison Street trench is in relation to Lexington. All right, here's the uh, Yorkfield Community Center, and that black fence in the back end there, that's the water trench. And I'm taking you down here because I think some of these streets were shaped this way. They followed the contours of the uh, water. I'll show you where there used to be a big one that has since been destroyed. Uh, we're going past Old Yorkfield School and we're going, around, going to go around to the back end of the Old Yorkfield School. Alright, so Harrison is this weird little street here. Um, I wonder if they even have a name for this cul-de-sac, if it is a real cul-de-sac. But underneath this red car, uh, that's where the ditch used to be. There used to be a big concrete ditch here back in the school days. The school shut down, I think, in 77, and the uh, structure was torn down, oh, must have been in the mid-late 90s. That's when they sold off this whole area. But the drainage from uphill there uh, came this way, and then there's a pipe that's still there. I, I really hope some of these neighbors, you know, like watch this out of, you know, like a what the heck sort of thing. But there's a pipe that goes down between these lots somewhere. I don't know which one. Uh, and then that goes to the collection ditch, which in turn goes over to Roosevelt Road. You know, as long as we're in the Yorkfield area, there's a couple of other uh, topographical details to point out here, a little bit of weird history. Um, this is the Essig house over here, E-S-S-I-G. This was built sometime in the 1860s. It faces Butterfield Road. Uh, but take a look at the land level here. All right, do you see how the sidewalk is above the street? And do you see how the lot line is a lot higher? Well, this area got scraped. Let's take a look down the road this way. This is Yorkfield Avenue, and that's looking all the way down the Chatham. This is Fern, and here we are at Fern, looking south. And way down at the bottom is that Harrison Street uh, cul-de-sac with the new houses where the school used to be, the concrete ditch, and then the big pipe that went through there. All right, so this is my own little personal anecdote, side note, history. I used to walk to school, you know, starting with uh, kindergarten, you know. The first day, mom and the sister helped me out, but after that, I was on my own. And we had an unofficial path that went across this field. This was all empty in the old days. Uh, just a gap for the street. None of this was here. And the Yorkfield School athletic field was right about where this group of houses is over here. Um, when I walked to school in those old days, there were abandoned uh, culverts, catch basins, manholes, curbs. There were piles of debris, uh, concrete curbs, and like busted up pieces of sidewalk. Um, it's pretty apparent that this area got scraped, but why, I'm not so sure. Uh, the original, well, whatever the plan they had in those days when they laid out those curbs, they had streets that were going north and south that would pick up the uh, streets from the other side of Butterfield Road. I don't know why that plan didn't go through. Obviously, the land got sold to somebody else. 
I think it got scraped for the tollway back in the 50s, and that would explain um, what I got to see in the 60s. Um, however, there is another little neat nugget of history, and that is the Chicago's uh, World's Fair. This was like 1932, the Century of Progress. When they did the landscaping at that World's Fair, they needed topsoil. And the word from longtime residents is that topsoil was harvested down here in Yorkfield. Um, and that was before the streets were put in down there around the school and that. And looking at the 1938 aerial photos, it's very possible that this area here was scraped and it was scraped for topsoil for the Chicago World's Fair. Speaking of water, this land here is the DuPage Water Commission. This is the spare land at the back end. And that little creek probably came across at this little low spot right here. And looking up this way towards Hillcrest, that was the high spot of the collection point. And this hill is man-made. It is the actual reservoir. So we have an abandoned creek, but we also have an abandoned road. And here is Buck Road as seen from Harrison at Harrison and Hillside up at Mount Carmel Cemetery in Hillside. Buck Road was the old connector street. Um, the tollway was planned post-World War II. I think construction got going about 1954. Uh, ahead of time, they would have had surveyors, they would have had uh, early road crews, utility guys and stuff like that. And they looked at the swampy area around here, they looked at the water, they looked at the streets, they looked at where the expressway is going to go, and they decided uh, Buck Road in that position would not be allowed to exist. And so Buck Road got removed, and in its place, Harrison was uh, built all the way around the curve. Okay, so that's Roosevelt West, and we make our right turn onto Harrison, and this street is the street that replaced Buck Road. And then as soon as we come around the corner here, you'll start seeing all the water features out here, all the cattails. Now this is where that creek should have come out originally, back down in here. However, they routed it further west, and because of all the roads, uh, the original drainage in this area is just totally and completely changed over. So this is the low point over here. Um, completely rebuilt areas, remounded, uh, regraded. But when you get to the lowest part of the old topography, there wasn't too much they could do. So here's Roosevelt Road. And drainage around here is valuable enough all these flood ponds are numbered. They have like the ramp number, then a letter, like 30A, 30B. Okay, this is no man's land back in here with all the trees. Okay, up on the right there, that's the tunnel to get over to no man's land. And this is the beginning of the real peat bog, the morass, the swamp, whatever you want to call it. When we get over here to York Street, right here is old York Road, and then in 1960, this piece of York Road was constructed. And this actually happens to be the uh, deepest part of the old swamp, right off here to the left. 
they put a cold relief across it. And then over here where the new hospital is located, um, in my memory, there were a couple of big fields right in here that had all sorts of cattails and stuff in here. Now, I've been along York Woods there, also known as Forest Preserve Number 1, and I've been looking for the original Roosevelt Road configuration. The swamp was so deep behind us that they actually had to make a jog uh, to the south to get it past and around and through the swamp. Now, we're coming up on Salt Creek, and I'll be talking about Salt Creek in uh, future videos, but eventually all this water comes down to Salt Creek. Here it is right here. You're not going to be able to see much of it. That's the bridge. And then as we come out into Oak Brook Terrace, we're coming past Butterfield again. This is Butterfield with its highway configuration. Notice the cattails along the way here. There's this great rumor that there's an old caterpillar bulldozer uh, got swallowed by the mud right in here right in here thereabouts and when you pop out over here this was an old peat bog uh, old sand pits deep 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 and uh, natural springs and then suddenly you come up here and it's highland again so we're eastbound through the great swamp we're coming up on uh, Salt Creek again um, to the right there's an area where the creek kind of meandered and there were some natural springs down there including the old historic Mammoth Spring down at Harger and Spring Road. Spring Road of course is named after the springs went across the road right behind us and you can see more cattails in the ditches here. Uh, when it floods, when we get those six inch rains in two hours, uh, the road here just fills up uh, left to right. These uh, ramps will fill with water. I got some old videos uh, showing some of that. And here's York Woods again. Um, the first forest preserve in the entire DuPage County Forest Preserve. And I think it survived as open land because it was so darn swampy in there. And again, this is the deep part of the swamp right up in here. coming up on uh, no man's land again. So over here to the left is where the trailer court used to be and we're going to have a new park. Here's the I-88 ramp. There's the tunnel to get into no man's land. The little creeks go right through back behind there. Well, is there a conclusion? Yeah, there's, well, a series of thoughts. One of the thoughts is, uh, yes, I have found the original drainage area for the old creek. However, even though I've walked these uh, creek beds, I don't have the confidence to say that yes this is the original creek bed that 1938 aerial photo uh, indicated that right in this zone here there was some uh, dirt movement I don't know what it was I wish I had the original uh, photo but uh, right in this area it does appear to be the legit original creek uh, is this creek abandoned? I do have a conclusion on that, and it's yes. Um, uphill. So the creek starts up there by Butterfield and Stratford, Butterfield and Hillcrest. It gets cut off before it leaves Elmhurst, before it leaves DuPage. It all goes into the Elmhurst stormwater system over there. Uh, once you get up against the expressways, then the embankments and their ditches and their engineering, uh, that's moved a lot of the water. And so all we have left in here is 
Well, it's high ground. And since it's high ground, you're not going to see water in here unless there is a really, really severe rainstorm, that sort of thing. Since they have that one uh, catch basin down the ways, uh, yeah, they do know that there's water back in here and they want to collect it and they want to channelize it. Well, another part of the conclusion goes back to the study of history. Now, well, I've studied history, you know, world history, United States history, Elmhurst history, DuPage County history, uh, Berkeley history, Hillside history. Um, when you study history, you learn some things. Uh, the Spanish philosopher a hundred years ago, he was the guy that said, those who forget the lesson of history are doomed to repeat it. Uh, long ago, before he was around, Machiavelli, he said when you study history, you can discern patterns uh, as events occur, and the study of that patterns gives you knowledge where you can make educated guesses as to what's going to happen in the future. Um, what's going to happen around here? Well, we're surrounded by expressways here. The Tri-State Tollway is over there. Uh, I-88 is right over there with the bottom connector. Uh, 290, the old Congress Expressway, the Eisenhower, that's up over there. We got Butterfield Road up over there, Roosevelt Road down there. Uh, they got to drain these roads. Now, the Tri-State is being rebuilt right now, uh, 294. And as they add lanes and stuff, uh, those lanes are really just rain collectors, right? So they need more and more and more water storage. Bringing it back to this neighborhood, well, I'm not too hopeful. I, I really wish that this would last to some sort of uh, nature preserve, that sort of thing. That would be really neat to have a park back here, a forest preserve, state park, anything. Uh, but what's going to happen probably is, bit by bit, the tollway, the Department of Transportation, and probably the municipalities like Elmhurst, Berkeley, Hillside, what they're going to do is they're going to insist they need drainage, uh, and they're going to come and they're going to take it. And that means that the people that live back in here will probably have to fight to keep their residences, uh, to keep their properties. Uh, when you get bought out, they do buy you out at fair market value. Maybe they'll pad it out with something extra. I, I just don't know what's going to happen over here. They do have... One new house under construction back over here. Uh, but a lot of this is like time stood still back here. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, if you're interested in this sort of thing, I'd say the time to come and take a look is now. Because in another couple of years, none of this might be here. So, I'm at the abandoned creek, I'm at the abandoned road, I've given you a whole bunch of arcane history, but there's going to be more coming, so stay tuned, and we'll learn about some more swamps and creeks in the Elmhurst, Illinois area.